So I've been mostly focusing on sleeve designs as of last night and this morning. So I'm going to work on that more today because so far everything's been chest only. But look at this bin wall. <gasps> We're finally putting stuff in here. It's been sitting empty for months. And so this just feels so cool, seeing it all labeled, seeing things in the bags with the little stickers and stuff on it. It just, it looks profesh. It is so satisfying to see everything in here. And let me show you a clip of the alternative colors for 4X and 5X without the bags on them. Oh my God, they look great. And yes, these colors are exclusive to that size. You can't get them in smaller sizes. It's because the pink and sandstone I want are just not available in higher than 3XL. And even the sand color, which is lighter than the sandstone, still looks so freaking amazing. And unfortunately, the chocolate brown was only available in 4X. I checked several websites to try to get it in 5 and it was sold out everywhere. So yeah, yesterday I was in here during the night and I organized all the pink hoodies because the sizes were kind of mixed up and so i actually have them organized and they're folded with the tag showing because they were kind of rolled up before because christian had them folded so he could see which ones he had stitched the name onto but then you can't tell what sizes size it is without unrolling it and so it's been a nightmare trying to find a particular hoodie style and size so i am going to continue on with the organizing today while stitching out more sleeves and stuff and since I want to open this shop next Sunday, a week from today, well, we need to, you know, we need this machine running for as many hours as possible per day. So that's why I'm in here. Even though Christian has the day off, I'm like, I'm going to step in. I mean, I kind of had half the day off, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can. I just ironed on all the backing. I'm hoping it lasts. You guys are my guinea pigs to see how long this lasts. Because if it's something that peels up in a few washes, then I might stop doing it. But we're trying it out. And it's now Monday. I was in the embroidery room till just about midnight last night. <laughs> so, busy day. And today I'm going to do some doodling. But first I want to show off the new sleeves that I got. Oh, it's so exciting. So I was putting stickers in these sleeves. But some of them don't fit. Like this one is too wide. Because a lot of my stickers are three inches on the longest side. And so if it's three by three, like a circle, it will not fit. But if it's something like this Y baby Y, if you turn it sideways, it just fits. But I have some more bigger ones like this coming in. Well, tulip button is kind of square. Like pretty much just as wide as it is tall. And then I have the gouache mushroom one, which is circular. So I got some slightly bigger ones. This size I actually got for enamel pins, but it ended up working for a lot of the stickers. So that's the small size. This is the new one. And then this is the five by seven for the prints. So now I have three, but this is kind of long. Like it might be a bit annoying putting the stickers all the way in. So I might trim them with my guillotine cutter, just cut a little bit off to make it a little shorter. Also got in one new box size. It's a nine by nine by 12. I just have 25 of them, but I might need that for certain situations. Like if someone gets a sweater plus a lot of other stuff or if they're getting two sweaters plus other things. Because I've got the, the poly mailers if it's just sweaters. But if it's something like an 8x10 print or the 8x10 or I guess 8.5x11 planner pads, then I'll probably put them in a box instead. So I just got a few of those. <laughs> I'm just inserting a clip because I'm editing this and I'm like casual syringes just sitting there. I had those out. They're left out to dry because... Christian was oiling the embroidery machine and the little oil pen has a needle tip and it was clogged. And so we used the syringe to force water through it to unclog it. So that's why that's there. Those are my art syringes. They have no needle tips. I mean, they come with some tips that are blunt, but you know, it's like, it's just for art purposes. Also, this vlog was missing its whole intro because I deleted my initial clip of showing the embroidery room and that included the intro, so oops. I think pretty much all I was saying is that uh, my brother and my sister-in-law were in the city and we went out for lunch and I drove them to the airport and then I went into the embroidery stuff and talked about how I was gonna do some art in this video. That was it, okay, bye. And I ended up getting a pegboard. I was just gonna make one using some scrap wood <laughs> in the garage, but I changed my mind and just ordered one because then I don't have to worry about the holes being spaced right and 
yeah, it's just pre-done. Although I need to put some mounting hardware on the back because it doesn't have any, so I'll figure that out. I already have an idea for it, but I got um, J hooks because I figured that would be better than the straighter prongs because it's for the for the embroidery hoops and I don't want to knock one off while pulling one off I just figured these would be a little more secure for holding the hoops and I could probably set those up today but I'm gonna draw instead <laughs> my pens are such a mess this looks better when I had the container in there I just pulled it out to root through it but everything is so all over the place like there's stuff in all compartments not sorted <laughs> it's driving me nuts I don't know if I want to use the souffle pens or not. I was thinking I would use these Muji ones, but then I was like, let's pull out the souffles too. And I'm like, okay, we're not here to just organize this whole thing. <sighs> I just put this back on because I was cutting a bunch of stabilizer from that giant roll. And so I put this to protect the table and now I'm like, oh, I want it off again. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe I should because I will need it off for product photography. Ah. I just put this back up here too and connect it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, I'm ready to just chill and do some art while Christian slaves away on the sweaters. <laughs> During the lake trip vlog from a little over a month ago, I took a lot of close-ups of plants on our walk and so I'm gonna just pause at certain points and use those as reference. Little spiky things, those, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a bunch I took so yeah. Let's maybe start with these. I'm just gonna do some quick pen doodles to start. Ow! <laughs> right when I started recording she scratched me. This thing has been going off for days. I mean, it was silent yesterday. I think it's going nuts because my store is currently closed and so it doesn't really know what to display. It'll like drop down and then slowly climb its way back up to the proper number. Like it's at the proper number right now, but then it'll drop and then incrementally climb again. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Speaking of climbing. What do you need? What do you need? Smell my coffee breath. <gasps> Poor Kiki. But anyway, here's the start of the doodling using the various pens. And I forgot that when I bought these Muji pens, I didn't realize they came in different thicknesses. And so I was just grabbing some and they're all different thicknesses. So most of the colors are 0.5 and the black is 0.7, but then the pink is 0.38 and it drives me nuts that the pink is thinner. And of course it had to be the pink. <laughs> So tragic. I honestly kind of like the 0.7. 0.5 is pretty okay too, but whenever I'd use the black one, it just felt extra juicy. And so, yeah, maybe next time I'm at a Muji store, <laughs> I can grab more. I used to live right across the street from Muji. I don't even know if there is one here in Calgary. <laughs> oh, my life is in shambles. Um, anyway, this doodle session here proves that you can draw even when you don't know what to draw because this was a warm-up of sorts. I'm drawing in pen. There's no erasing allowed. If something's crappy, you just move on. You can either reattempt it or just move on to the next object. And it just gets your brain in the creative mood. It wakes it up. It wakes up your hand too. And it's just a great warm-up or that could just be all you do. I really wasn't sure how much I was going to draw that day. Was I going to start doing some like more fleshed out doodles? Was I going to plan out a full illustration? I didn't know where this session was going to take me and I wasn't feeling very creative at the start and so I'm just copying from reference. It's a great way to just get started and wake up that creative brain. And after this page of plants I got a little stuck. I drew a simple little face and then I thought okay where am I going <laughs> from here? I could find more plants to draw. I do have a whole folder on my phone of plant pictures that I take and it's a great place to get more plants but I was kind of over the plant thing after the first page so I was thinking and then I decided to jot down on my notepad which I probably could have just jotted right down in the book in the sketchbook but whatever I was trying to think of 
themes and ideas for my next illustration. So I wrote a not so still still life. Inanimate objects in motion can incorporate animals, insects, etc., but not in a cartoony way. Objects stacked slash piled, object morphing into another, lots of overlap and interaction, a bit chaotic but beautiful and appealing, insects emerging from objects, nonsensical scale. So that's what I wrote down. <laughs> and I started thinking of a teacup that's spilling, almost like it's swirling. You know, like the cup is tilting and swirling and it's splashing out and the tea drops are turning into bees. So that fulfills the morphing idea, the nonsensical idea of what I had written down. And so I was doing a bunch of little thumbnails trying to figure out the angle of the cup. But then it's like, okay, well, what else is there? Is there a saucer underneath that's sort of in motion too? I just want it to feel very in motion and like stuff is flying about. And then I was drawing the T turning into B's turning into petals, which was a neat idea as well. And then another thumbnail of tea spilling out. And I was kind of stuck. I felt like I just kept drawing the same things over and over again. I was planning a bit of the background color. Like, would it be a splotchy blue? Would it be a gradient color? Maybe like orange to blue. And then I went and got an actual teacup from upstairs and started drawing that. And just playing around with the idea, seeing if something good could come out of this rough concept. Try to nail down the composition and like, are there other objects in there instead of just a plain splotchy background? Like what else, what else is there? What else is there? <laughs> so I just kept doodling and nice thing about pen is I just kept moving on to the next thing instead of erasing because I know I would have erased a lot during this stage. So I'm glad I worked in pen and this is the final spread. Heep. But yes, as you just saw, my doodling turned into an idea for an illustration and I feel like it would be a good painting and as I have done a lot lately, I think I'm gonna do this sketch digitally because I get scared. Like, I, especially with the teacup, it's very geometric. I need it just right. Okay, now I'm starting to second guess this composition because I just don't know if it's too basic. Like, based on the stuff I wrote on the notepad, this doesn't tick many of those boxes and it's much more simplistic than what I had in mind. It's just maybe it's too basic and it feels just, it still feels a little bit too much like pitcher pour, just like when I tried to mix the two background colors, I was like, hmm, pitcher pour. I still do love the idea though of like bees becoming petals. So maybe I can save this whole swirly thing for something else, some kind of future illustration. Yeah, I think this needs more workshopping. Sniffing my armpit. Okay, I've been doing more doodling, playing around with more with the teacup idea, playing around with like flowers, petals turning to bees, and petals dripping into a cup. Here are the cups being held up by vines because I was kind of doing that on the the other side, like thorny stem of a rose holding up the teacup. So I was kind of revisiting that, but with a bunch of flowers up here. And I kind of like the look of this, but anyway, something with it being like a book in the foreground, a book in the corner, I don't know. I was drawing all kinds of stuff. And then I was drawing candles. I don't know why, but there's a lot of candle stuff here. Here's a watering can with bees coming out, a cat scratching a giant spool of thread, a candle, a corn candle. <laughs> Listen, it was all over the place. Um, a book with stuff falling out, a boot with flowers in it, and the laces are thorns. Mmm, thorny stems. I don't know. <laughs> I went from being like, yes, I have my next art idea, to being like, well, actually, it's like kind of basic. <laughs> I mean, basic can be fine, too, but I could still do it while thinking more about these ideas. I'm really not sure. I'm a little Becky, swimming in a candle. Okay, but how do we spruce it up? How do we add a little extra something to this and a little extra whimsy? 
It's now Tuesday. Yesterday, I went into the embroidery room around 6 or 6.30. When did I go in there? I don't know. But I was in there till midnight, as I have been when I go in there in the evenings. <sighs> Which has been the last three nights, or has it been four nights now? I don't know. And I'll be in there again tonight. <laughs> What's sad is I'm not making any extra sweaters. I'm just adding embroidery to the sleeves. At least yesterday, that's exclusively what I was doing. The last two times I was also doing some chest embroidery, but now I'm just getting Christian to stitch the chest on the ones I want to work on. And then he keeps them unbagged so that I can add the sleeves. But man, we're not going to have a whole lot of sweaters. Um, probably like uh, around 120 to 130. And... I don't know how many you're gonna have the sleeves on, but that's what we're starting with, which is probably a good number. Like, I don't wanna go too crazy because what if they don't even sell that well? A lot of people seem interested, but you never know for sure. <laughs> the only problem is there's only gonna be between one and three of each variant. Maybe some things will have four, but I calculated it out this morning. There are 70 variants, 70 because you've got nine different sizes, there's multiple colors, there's two different options for where the embroidery goes, there's crew neck versus hoodie, so when you factor all that out, there are 70 variants. And boy, do we ever need a second embroidery machine. Not now though, not till this first one pays for itself, but <laughs> we're feeling the pain. But yeah, I've just been doodling. I'm revisiting the decky and candle wax thing, trying to expand on the idea. Oh, Christian, by the way, your reeds idea of like the little, what did you say about the reeds? Having like a bouquet of flower with- Oh yeah, with reeds in it. With the- Or whatever they're called. Oh, I thought, what if there's like a hairbrush, but the bristles are a little reeds. But I don't think I'm gonna incorporate that into this, but I could revisit that for another ducky illustration but i thought that was a neat idea because i was trying to think of stuff that would be on a desk and i thought oh a hairbrush would be on a desk like if it's a vanity type of desk <laughs> uh so yeah i was just doing more doodles and then i was thinking of other items that could be on there like a pen maybe coins a necklace a little trinket box books so this is my latest thumbnail although i might lower the candle a little bit i feel like there's a lot of vertical space here but I want the base of the candle, like the candle holder, to be slightly visible. Otherwise, it just feels like the candle's floating in nothingness if it looks like that or like that. That was me trying to put the hairbrush in there. <laughs> and so, yeah, I feel like I need a little bit of the base showing. I've got the necklace in this corner. It could be a couple books stacked, maybe some loose papers and the trinket box. Then I thought this would just be the bottom of another candle, a bit more jewelry, coin, pen. I don't know. That was the latest. <laughs> thumbnail so that's what I'm thinking it doesn't tick all of these boxes but I didn't expect one painting to do all of this this is just ideas for going forward you know not just for one illustration but for several illustrations I guess stacked counts uh, there's some overlap <laughs> maybe not chaotic but it's beautiful and appealing hopefully <laughs> nonsensical scale we've got that because the duckies are little and then I'm like, well, should there be little ducks elsewhere? Like, should there be more to it? Or should the ducks be the only whimsical thing in this? That's what's tricky. I think it might be only ducks because the candle and ducks will be in focus and the rest will be a little out of focus. So I don't know, but this this is the <laughs> current idea. Although I would still love to revisit the morphing bee idea at some point, especially like the petal thing I like, either from some kind of droplets or into petals also liked my thorn laces idea so we'll see we'll see so i pulled out this board it's got a little something there i don't know if i can sand that down or if that's just like the top layer so maybe if i sand it it exposes the innards i don't know these are henna splotches because this is the board i put on the bathroom sink when i dye my hair so we'll have to use a different one next time I dye my hair. Because there's no counter space in the basement bathroom, so this becomes the counter. But I just feel like this would maybe be a good size for the painting. So I'm going to get this gessoed right away. Oh my god, I just took off the cover. Now I want the cover back. Yesterday I was like, oh no, I didn't plug in my iPad. Because I thought I would start sketching. And so then I was going to go over to my computer to sketch on the Cintiq. 
and I didn't plug it in. And so I went to grab my iPad just now and I'm like, oh yeah, I never did charge it because it's my preferred way to sketch. I don't really like Procreate for coloring stuff, but I love it for sketching. Okay, whoa, I just checked the tracking for my stickers. Oh, that reminds me, I have to go to the post office, which I should do. I checked the tracking for my stickers and they're out for delivery. I checked this morning when I first woke up and it said that they were in South Dakota. So I was not expecting delivery today. That is excellent news because that means I can open the shop on Sunday. <laughs> and yeah, I need to go to the post office because my prints were not delivered yesterday. Well, they were delivered to the post office. I think it's because it needs a signature, but like, why couldn't they just get the signature at the door? <laughs> Such a cute little box. <laughs> Here I am once again. Oh, spooking the bib. And it's yet another cloudy day. It's been so blah lately. Okay, I'm also gonna lay down this bigger board. I need protection for my protective mat. My protective mat needs a layer of protection. I just don't want a bunch of paint splatter. And speaking of that, this is gonna come off. I can't find my little white tripod. I swear I see it all over the place every day, but I don't know where it is. Sand off the henna crummies and rough up the surface a bit because it's pretty slick. I'll be doing two coats, doodle, so. Here's number one. What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> I had this raised up on, on my box of pencils, but then I just moved the box of pencils because I was sanding, I wanted this flat. Plus I put the camera on the box, so now what's gonna prop this up? <laughs> I mean, it is just the back side of the board underneath. It doesn't matter if I get paint on it, but it's just easier to get the sides when they're elevated. Plus then you don't get that pooling of paint right at the bottom where the two boards meet. Oh my God. The orange is coming through the paint, like the orange of the henna. It's turning the gesso orange. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello. While I was doing the final strokes of gesso, the stickers were delivered. You can't see anything. There we go. What do we got here? What the f Okay, the top one was a little messed up. I was like, what's going on here? It was like all crinkled and off center, although that makes it easy to peel. This holo is uh, very intense. Oh my God. A little too intense if you ask me. Like, it's kind of hard to see the mushrooms. <laughs> you can see them at certain angles. Uh, not sure how I feel about that. And not sure how I feel about that. And I have 500 of them. Wow. Okay. okay, this one's looking a little better, but still very crazy on the hollow shards. The shards are just a lot. <laughs> I think this one's a bit worse because it's black. Anything darker hollow will show up more on. And it's, it's really showing, holy. This is a bit better, but still really intense. It's so glossy too that it's, I mean, I'm right in front of a window. It probably would have less glare if you're not right in front of a window. Now the other two have a different style of hollow on them. It's it's less intense with the little star hollow. I think I'm liking this hollow more. And last but not least, Mr. Bun Bun. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, let me get away from the window and show these again. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about these. Like from a certain angle, you see this. It's almost like the holofilm is not transparent enough. 
I'm so used to the hollow prints having a more subtle hollow. Like, let me compare the sticker to the print. Like, no matter what angle you have the print at, there's still clarity of the image, whereas the sticker, it has this haze over it from certain angles. Hmm, the print's definitely better than the sticker. Sad. Oops. <laughs> I was like, it almost feels like the hollow film's not stuck down all the way, so I'm like, let me scrape it. I bent it. No, that did not change anything. I guess some angles it looks good, but most of the time there's just a fogginess over them. Now, does the hollow film come off? <laughs> okay, I got it, but I destroyed the sticker. I'm, I'm tempted to reorder these, honestly. Like from a sticker beaver instead. Just look at the difference at a glance like this. It's like, <laughs> these are infinitely better in my opinion. So maybe I'll still put these up, but at half price and then I'll reorder them, but with sticker beaver right now. Cause they're local. Last time I got them within a matter of days. So I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, I just placed the order. I know some people are gonna like the hollow stickers, but they're just not up to my standards, so I'm ordering other ones. <laughs> but I will still make the hollow ones available, like I said, so you can still grab them if you want. The estimated delivery when placing the order was August 29th, which is too late, but I'm kind of hoping it comes before that. Because last time I ordered from Sticker Beaver, they came like two or three days later. It was within the same vlog that they were delivered after I'd ordered them. So I'm kind of hoping. <laughs> Honestly, even if they come on Monday, that'd be fine. But then I wouldn't have photos for the listings. So I don't know if people would be willing to buy them without photos. Because I could do like a mock-up thing where I digitally insert the sticker. <laughs> it's maybe putting a little too much faith into their speed. Depends how many orders and stuff they have right now, right? I don't know where I am in the <laughs> production queue, so... This henna is indestructible. It just keeps showing through. I'm hoping that's just a gesso thing and that when I do some acrylic for the background, it does not show through. <laughs> so I'll be doing acrylic then oil. So, oh God. Oh, why? <laughs> it shows through so much. It just rises to the surface. <laughs> um, what? Is this not charging it? Whoa. What is going on? No. Oh, Apple, why are you such a little see you next Tuesday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that wants to work. Okay. Well, to the computer we go with my rejected concept still on screen. <laughs> One thing I don't like about this concept is it feels so like spilling the tea, which is cringe. You could say these are some bougie ducks. Bougie. So it's a 12 by 16. This is why it's important. Or wait, no, 16 by 12. <laughs> That's why it's important to know your canvas size ahead of time. What? Oh, why did I do 16 pixels by 12 pixels? <laughs> There's my canvas. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Inches. Wait, I did it backwards. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> I am the oval master! Except I might want it at a different angle. I want a little more top down so you can see the duckies more. Maybe. Well, there's room for the duckies there. I mean, that's not a perfect ellipse, but the candle's gonna be irregular. Oh, <gasps> this is on background layer. No! No! There. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> Yeah, I want the candle to be a little irregular, like higher on one side, you know, uneven. I mean, it's kind of a boring flame shape. Now that's interesting. Oh, yeah. So yeah, this illustration does not tick that many boxes from that list I made earlier, but it's okay. We can use that list more in the future. I just got really excited about this idea and 
it just clicked a bit more than the B one. And so, yep, I'm going with it. I'm sketching it out in Photoshop using my Cintiq and <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much more I have to say about it. The books were a little tricky. The perspective is a bit tricky. Like I was drawing two sheets of paper and then I was like, do these make sense? Because, you know, objects can be tilted at different angles. They don't have to follow perspective lines, but they still have to make sense for the perspective. And that's what is confusing to me. And I'm like, does this look okay? Like, does this necklace laying at this angle make sense? Does the angle of the candle make sense? Does anything make sense? And here I am failing at it. <laughs> I'm drawing ellipses <laughs> that other one I drew it it was just beautiful first try and then you know the universe had to even itself out and make me suffer but then I just used the elliptical marquee tool to make an ellipse and added a stroke to it so ha ha hacks and then I could just duplicate it to make a little rim and I did the same thing for these little coins just elliptical marquee <laughs> which does look a little rigid but Again, this is not final line art or anything, so this will be transferred onto the wooden board to be painted, and so the edges will look a lot more natural later. You know, it looks a little stiff for now. I mean, this whole thing, I guess, is stiff-ish. In my list, I was like, yeah, lots of movement, things just flying around, and I'm like, how about objects just sitting still on a desk? <laughs> It's still a fun idea though. I, I'm excited about it. And I decided to make the ducks not too cartoony because they could have been the same style as my little ducky collection. But I thought, well, let's make it a little more on the realistic side for this because then it feels, something about it feels even whimsier when it's like, I guess it just feels like surrealism <laughs> a little bit. The ducky part anyway. It's just like, it's kind of based in reality but it doesn't make sense. What is this? I don't know. So that's my line art for the duckies. Hell yeah. And I made the candle a little wider at the top. Made it, its shape a little more interesting. So here's the line art. The lines are very straight for the books because I would just draw a straight line and then put it in place. <laughs> but it'll hopefully look a little more organic when I do the actual painting. This is just a guide. Hopefully the perspective's okay. I think I could get away with it, possibly. <laughs> and I decided to add a few duck things, like put ducks on the coins and on the necklace. I don't know if that's gonna take away too much from these, probably not, cause it'll be a little in shadow and I can make it not high contrast in terms of colors and stuff, just subtle ducks. And then I was thinking of maybe putting one on the book, but I feel like the little metal trinket box is too much in the way. And the back's gonna be so much in shadow anyway that I don't, think I should. This is going to be a little chain link necklace chain, but I just drew it as a solid line for now because I'm not going to trace over all the chain links. That's something I'll just do in in paint. Even here, I didn't have to draw all these pearls, but I just did it. I don't know if I'm going to actually work on this on stream tomorrow or not. I'm flip-flopping a little. It's currently 7.45. Ah, it's getting late already. I was just upstairs uh, eating supper and watching only murders in the building with Christian. And I was like, okay, I need to get back down here and keep working on stuff. I should be in the embroidery room right now. But yeah, this is technically ready to transfer over, but I don't really wanna rush into starting this. Like I still have to bust out the projector and set it up and project on the line art. But first I need rough color for the background too. And so like, I could do that all in stream, but I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I could, I could. And then I could start with the acrylic base layers. Or I could just do an embroidery stream. But the thing about the embroidery stream is I have nothing set up for it. So I'd have to figure that out. But I do need to do that eventually anyway. Like now could be the time. Especially if I'm going to be in the embroidery room tonight. While I'm in between jobs, I can be setting that up. The other thing I would like to do with the drawing is just quickly digitally figure out the colors and the lighting and I don't want to rush through that either because that's something I would need to do before the stream. So that's another reason why I'm thinking of just doing the embroidery stream. And now a glimpse into what I do in the embroidery room, which you kind of already have a sense of from the stream, but 
you get some new camera angles here. So since I'm doing the sleeves, I'm using the sleeve hooping station. And I sometimes will bunch up the sleeve before I slide it on. I mostly need to do that for the small sizes because they're pretty tight. And of course the stabilizer's on there first and the first half of the hoop. Then you slide the sweater on. And then you put on the top half of the hoop, make sure the fabric is nice and taut, and then you pull it off. And I have to switch out the bobbin. I can get two to three sleeves per bobbin. And then I have this air thing, which is kind of like compressed canned air, except it lasts forever. Well, maybe not forever, but you know. <laughs> Got that fresh bobbin in there and put the hoop on, which is a little tricky if you've got a hoodie because it really bunches up on that back bar and you don't want it bunching up under the area where it's going to stitch. So have to be extra sure it's not bunched up. I don't even know if that was a hoodie. That one might be a crew neck, but just making sure it's not all bunched up. And then it starts stitching. And again, these are real time clips with the machine. It's just that fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's noisy. Yes. I have my earbuds in when I'm in there and I'm listening to something like a YouTube video or whatever. Sometimes music. I've been just been burning through my sub inbox. It's, I mean, there hasn't been much posted to YouTube these days anyway, but since I'm in there every night, I'm really burning through everything and running out of stuff to listen to. And here I'm cutting some stabilizer. I've got a 15 inch roll, which is perfect for doing the sleeves. I just fold it in half after measuring out about 21 inches, just a little under 21. I fold it in half and cut down that center line. Super easy peasy. And I only use one piece of stabilizer for the sleeves because the hoop's pretty narrow, so it's pretty stable. But for doing the chest, we double up on the stabilizer so that it's extra stable. There it's done, pulling it off and putting on the next one. I've got two of each hoop so I can have one prepared while the other one's stitching out. Doing the little swap, that one's a hoodie so it's bunching up a lot and I gotta make sure nothing's dangling in there, making sure no strings are in there because sometimes you're hooping it and a string gets in there somehow in the hoop. Here I'm just cutting off a couple little stray threads. Usually there's nothing to cut off but sometimes there is and Taking apart the hoop, you gotta turn it inside out and cut out the stabilizer. So yeah, the sleeves are a lot of work because that's two extra hoopings and the stabilizer cutting is more involved compared to the chest piece because I am cutting around each item individually since they are more spaced out, plus it's more comfortable if there's not stabilizer between the items. And I also have to iron on the cover-up stitch, which I don't do this night. I just had all the sweaters in a bin so I could do the ironing the next day. And I use this ruler to help me cut without nicking the sweater. I can stick it through and then just glide the scissors along the ruler. We did have one sweater nicking incident. Christian was cutting the chest part and he nicked the sweater. So rip. I figured that would happen eventually. <laughs> but thankfully it's only happened once. But uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time to do the sleeves. That's why they are a markup and are more expensive. Because technically the sweater's been hooped four times because we have chest, both sleeves, and the Bailey J logo on the back hip. So it's pretty involved, but it's so worth it. <laughs> and yep, tossing out that excess stabilizer. Fascinating stuff. And then I just take that exact same hoodie or crew neck, whatever, <laughs> and hoop the other sleeve. Oh yeah. So the chest takes about 40 minutes to stitch out and then the sleeves are 20 minutes each. So in total, that's 80 minutes of stitching for one sweater if it's got the sleeves. And that's assuming there aren't any kind of issues like a bunch of thread breaks or something. Usually there's not that much, but yeah. And then I decided to organize the top of this clothing rack because I wanted to put some folded sweaters there because if you noticed, there were some folded sitting on the counter. Those are ones Christian did this, the chest on and they were taking up counter space. So I decided to move all these other blanks out of the way so that I could put those other ones on top and get them off the freaking counter. So yeah, I just did that all night. <laughs> the usual nightly grind. Okay, I made okay progress. I started a little later tonight, but I have five sweaters done in there, except I do need to iron on the cover up still, but I'll do that during tomorrow's stream. And then this one, I have one sleeve stitched. I haven't even cut the stabilizer yet, but again, I'll do that tomorrow. Need to get the other sleeve. And then I will try to get through the rest of the ones Christian did the chest on during the stream. 
I don't know if I'll get to the mall. <laughs> Depends how long the stream runs, but I'll try my best. It's currently 11.43, so I'm out of here. It's now Thursday. The Wednesday stream went well. I worked on the sweaters, and I stopped when Christian had supper ready, but I went back down because I had to finish off what I was doing, and Christian was going to maybe go in there for a couple hours to do a little bit more, but... I ended up just staying in there. I was on a roll and I stayed in there till midnight. So the stream started at 12 and I stopped embroidering at midnight. So <laughs> I had a long day in there yesterday. I got groceries today, fill up a car with gas, and swung by the liquor store because we're having some people over on Saturday. One thing I would like to do either today or tomorrow is just uh, a double check of the inventory quickly. Like someone, one person would just read what's in each bucket and the other person just double checks the tracking sheet. Okay. Yeah. No, no rush on it because it's just, I think. I mean, we morning. can do it now before I officially start on this. Oh yeah, sure. Let's do it. I'm about to sign some prints. Is about to sign the yeah. Just goes faster with you. So cute. Do you want to read or do you want to type? I'll read them off. Okay. Okay, back from inventory. Because we have a spreadsheet, so we were just cross-referencing what we had with the spreadsheet. And one thing we were short one on, and one thing we had one too many of. Although being short one was to be expected, because we gave... A sweater to my sister-in-law so. <sighs> but yes I um, got groceries and stuff because I want to make that dip that I make <laughs> that I learned from my mom I'm gonna make that dip for our friends they've never had it and it's kind of like making me realize how much I miss hosting stuff like this like little get-togethers because we frequently hosted in Vancouver because we were renting a whole house, and so when we had the big get-togethers, it was the perfect place for it. Okay, I'm going to sacrifice one of these for signing tests. This feels too dark, but my other green almost feels like it's going to be too light. Is this lighter? I have two green Sharpie pens. Okay, this lighter one might be good. Because for these Sharpie pens, they're like I think they're just fine tip Sharpies. I don't think they're called Sharpie pens. Ultra fine point. That might be a bit light, because I'm going to sign in the corner where the green is. We are not going to have enough sweaters. We did the tally just now. We have 93. 93. So, <laughs> that's not nearly enough. I mean, there are some where the chest is stitched, and I still have to do the sleeves. So, once those are done, those will get added to the tally. But, I'm nervous for the sweaters. It's going to be very limited stock to start off. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of okay. It looks a bit bluish, though. Not too bad. Because I could also do pink or purple because that would match. Oh, this one's actually <laughs> darker than I thought it would be. And that's a little softer. That right, that right there. They kind of all look good. I think the orange though. Orange, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Today is cloudy yet again, but tomorrow's supposed to be sunny. So I'm hoping to do all my photography tomorrow. Today I'm going to sign these. I'm going to do things like weigh out all the sweaters. Every single variant. All 70 variants need to be weighed out. <laughs> Those numbers input into the listing. Because <laughs> a hoodie's going to weigh more than a crew neck, maybe. Maybe. I mean, the hoodies do feel slightly thinner than the crew neck, so maybe not. But also it adds extra weight if the sleeves are embroidered versus it being just the chest and so on and so forth. So... I can do a bunch of that. The sweater photography honestly making me nervous because I've never photographed clothing. It's my first foray into fabric photography. Tonight I will be back in the embroidery room stitching on more sleeves because <laughs> I've still got that pile of sweater that needs a sleeve stitched on. I totally forgot that I also have to edit this vlog today. Oop. So yeah, once I'm done signing the prints, I will do that. So I'm ending it here. Thank you so much for watching. The shop will be opening Sunday at noon, Mountain Daylight Time. And hopefully I'm ready and hopefully everything's good. <laughs> Thank you. See you in the next one. 
and I have the stickers on this little shelf and I've got space for the new ones. There's even room on the back for more. And this thing expands outwards. It's fully collapsed right now, so it can go wider. And I built this. I realized at the end I forgot the Thicker Treat stickers, so I just put them in the front.